Hello, welcome to Widener News, bringing the latest news from Widener. I'm Sam DeVegas. And I'm Kyra Jones. Let's see what this week has in store for us. Well, the Pride Activities Council will be holding a Pride Quiz No Night in the UC atrium at 8 p.m. today. Come test your, <laughs> come test your uh, trivia skills before you leave for the break. Who knows, maybe you'll win a prize. I'm super excited to share that spring break is right around the corner. And with spring break comes residence hall closings. Resident halls will be closing at 6 p.m. tomorrow, March 2nd. Don't forget to check out with your RA so you don't get an improper checkout fee. And more importantly, don't forget to enjoy the break. I am so excited for Me break. Me too. Do you have any plans? Hopefully visit some friends and family. We'll see. Okay, that sounds awesome. Well, the weather has been quite a tease lately. It's been feeling pretty good, but let's see how it's going to be during the break. Tiffany. Good evening, everybody. I am Tiffany Dubois with your weather report. I hope everyone likes clouds since that'll be what we are experiencing this week during our break. Friday will be rainy cloudy with a high of 43 degrees and a low of 35. Saturday, the high will be 46 degrees with a low of 32. It will be mostly cloudy during the whole day, so bundle up with a book and a blanket. Sunday, the high will be 45 degrees with low at 30 degrees with continuing cloudiness. Monday, we'll see a surprising amount of sun, the high at 47 degrees, the low at 32. Tuesday, we'll, will be p.m. showers, the high at 47 degrees again, the low increasing to 36. And Wednesday, we are back at most cloudy skies with a high of 48 degrees and a low of 34. I hope everyone enjoys the mostly cloudy weather of spring break and see you next week. Once again, I am Tiffany Dubois and try to stay dry. Back to you guys. Thanks, Tiffany. After an enjoyable spring break, do not forget that Residence Life theme housing applications are due Monday, March 12th. Is your mind active? Do you want to make it more active? Well, join us in room A on March 13th for a mental health movie night. Sounds fun. Don't miss out to get involved with Widener's Sorority Life with CPC Pride Week, starting Monday, March 12th through the 16th. The lovely ladies will be creating banners, playing Jeopardy, and also trying self-defense. Widener Unplugged is back, so do not miss your chance to kick back and relax with the wonderful Katie Rising on March 15th at 8 p.m. in the UC Web Room. Should be good. <coughs> on the topic of kicking back and relaxing, let's see if our pride is kicking butt before the break. Mike? Thank you, Kyra. This past weekend, Widener Baseball had their first weekend of the season. They took on the Immaculata Mighty Max in a doubleheader. Leading the Pride in the first game was shortstop Steven DeBellis, who went 2 for 4, which included a walk-off double to give the Pride the win. The Pride were backed by a wonderful pitching performance by Josh Lafferty, in-game who managed to strike out 10 batters in 6 innings. In Game 2, the offense was sparked by Nick D'Alessandro, who went 2 for 3 with 2 runs scored. The Pride won in dramatic fashion yet again as Dylan Morset hit a sack fly in the top of the ninth to give the Pride the win and the doubleheader sweep. The Pride will be back in action March 3rd in Winter Haven, Florida as they take part in the Russ Matt Invitational. It was a mighty effort for the women's lax team this past Saturday, but unfortunately the Pride fell 17-13. Junior attacker Kelly Lynch provided five goals for the Pride in the losing effort. Her contributions this week, this past week landed her the MAC Offensive Player of the Week, so congratulations to Lynch on that honor. Speaking of awards, men's basketball guard Tyler Drews and forward Sadia Sambo were given end-of-the-season honors by Middle Atlantic Conference. Tyler Drews was named the All-MAC Commonwealth second team, and Sambo was named as an honorable mention to the All-MAC Commonwealth. Congratulations to the duo. Also, the men's basketball team destroyed the Wilson College Phoenix with a final score of 92-65. to The team will move on to the quarterfinals of the tournament tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Now back to you, Sam and Kyra. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. In more serious news, the NRA fights back this week. Ever since the February 14th mass shooting at the high school in Florida, there have been calls for stricter gun control. However, the NRA stated that they did not back any ban. The NRA's comments appear to be going against what Trump's proposal was to tighten gun control. Either way, on Sunday, some students return to the school for the first time. Our prayers go out to the families and victims. Our condolences also go out to the Cosby family. Bill Cosby's daughter, Anissa, has died of renal kidney disease failure at the age of 44. The Cosby family has thanked all the people who have reached out to them at this difficult time. More news on Trump's border wall. President Trump's refusal to publicly drop his demand that Mexico pay for the U.S. border wall has derailed plans for Mexico's president to make his first visit here in the U.S. at the Trump White House. This happened after a telephone call last week increased tensions on the issue. That's what the American and Mexican officials said. 
President Trump continues to insist that the Mexico will pay for the border wall, although the Mexican government has vigorously denied that they will pay for any wall. A dad and his daughter thought of a unique way to sell Girl Scout cookies by creating a jingle. Charity, the sweet six-year-old, and her dad decided to put a twist on Childish Gambino's Red Bone to sell her Girl Scout cookies. The song paid off, and she was able to surpass her goal of selling 1,300 boxes. What a cute way to sell Girl Scout cookies. That sounds adorable. I know. If I did the same thing, wouldn't get as many sales, but <laughs> I'll try. With more sadder news here at Widener, uh, one of our professors, Dr. Atkinson, has just passed away. Dr. Atkinson was an assistant professor here in the School of Engineering with a specialty in the field of biomedical engineering. Really hard stuff. To assist all faculty, students, and staff, counseling services are being offered on campus for anyone who would like to talk with someone or find needed support during this difficult time. You may call the number below to schedule a counseling uh, set up for you or for a group of people. Professor Atkins' family has made arrangements for a memorial mass on Friday, March the 2nd at 1 p.m. at Christ the King Roman Catholic Church located at 200 Woodsor Ave in Haddonfield, New Jersey. The family will receive friends following the Mass. His interment will be private. Widener will provide transportation for students, faculty, and staff who wish to attend the Mass on Friday. The shuttle schedule can be found online on Campus Cruiser. Dr. Atkins will be deeply missed. Each member of the community here at Widener is important and valued. It has been terribly sad, and we send our condolences to the Atkins family from everyone in Widener Productions. So all we have for you this week. I'm Sam DeVecus. And I'm Kyra Jones. See you after the break. As we close, we'd like to hold a moment in silence in memory of Dr. Atkins. <laughs> 